I invested in diamonds because, as they say, diamonds are a girl's best friend. And I think I can prove that. Diamonds? See? And the second reason is, of course, also because I would like to try to sharpen end mills. And I think these uh, diamond cup wheels will do the trick. I don't want to use stones because I don't have a guard for this machine and you never know what can happen with uh, grinding stones. I think this will be more secure. Now I have to think a lot. I can put this thing here or I can put this thing here. My end mill this way, this way, this way. But we will figure this out later. First of all I have to make some kind of arbor to hold this thing here in place in this spindle, the spindle and so I can put it in a collet. And I think I found exactly the material I need for it. This is a piece of bold steel. Over to the lathe and let's make something. With these inserts here I never have a good finish. It makes a nice and perfect, almost perfect finish for a few millimeter and then for whatever reason it doesn't work anymore. And this finish feels a bit as if it's uh, hairy. But I invested in brand new. Let's see what these new inserts will do. That seems to cut, but uh, it's not a real revolution. But we'll see after a little bit more use. Fail. To keep the maximum concentricity I wanted to make this part in one setup. So here comes the cup wheel and this part here will be the shank that goes in this uh, collet. But as you could see it was not really a success. So now I'm gonna try what I didn't want to do from the beginning. I'm gonna try to plunge in with a round form tool and see if that works. Right, that seemed to work. Now let's try again, again, parting off with the rear tool post and it's still scary. Mm -hmm. 
And this was end of my cutting tool. I had maybe a handful of oopsies, but here it is, finally. To hold my cutter in place, I thought using this drill chuck. I think it could be easy because I can hold whatever cutter I want. There's of course another problem. This shank here on the back side, it's some weird size and it doesn't fit this collet that goes in here. It's too small. So to be good, I should make a brand new little shaft here that fits my 10 mm collet. Let's do this first. And as you can see, I already made good progress to make this little shaft. And I had to stop and take it out again, because to cut this thread on this thing, I need a 48 tooth gear, change gear for the lathe here, which of course I don't have. So first, before this one, let's make a gear. A hole. Yep. That will do. Okay, I cheated a bit because I bought a real gear cutter and I installed my machine in horizontal mode and I never used it in this setup. I never used a real gear cutter and let's see what happens. Nothing. That's better. This was a depth of cut of one millimeter and I'm sure it can handle more. Let's give it two. Machine doesn't even feel it. I think this is a really rigid setup. Let's do the others.
all I have to do is put the banjo at the right place and we are good to go. It's a bit too loose, but I think it will work. Anyway, I have to drill and tap for a little set screw like this one that goes in inside the chuck here. So, it will work. I had to switch drill chucks because this one looks good but it's got two tenths of a millimeter run out which is eight foul too much so now I have this one this one looks like shit but it's got ten times less run out than this thing. The YouTube University teached me that the faces of an mill have to be cut in an angle and that is one degree to the inside, to the center and two degrees, ba uh, not back ray, but uh, free angle on the bottom. I don't know but that's uh, what I learned in your videos and I think it will not be too complicated to do this. Man, that's heavy. Sometimes you read in the comments, huh, all you hobby guys do is making tools that can make other tools and that you probably never gonna use. Yeah. That's true, and there are two main reasons for this. Reason one, of course, is we don't have real projects, we don't have real parts to make. It can happen sometimes that we have to make a part for a lawnmower or for a trailer or something, but of course, that's not every day. And to me, the main reason is, of course, I think you can compare it with, for example, rock climbing. Imagine you're on top of a mountain. To do what? There's nothing to do on top of a mountain. A guy I worked with, for one year, he trained hard to be able to run the marathon. And he did. And what did he win? He can run a marathon. Not long ago I watched a video from a blacksmith and he's restoring an anvil and he's making a new stand for it out of different pieces of wood and then metal straps around it and paint it with uh, linseed oil and drilling the holes exactly at the right spot using the edge finder he welds up this uh, anvil, cleans it up in his machines, shiny, never seen before. And the result, I think, was even too beautiful to put in a museum. And now that he's finished, he's going to beat the shit out of it. When I'm on vacation, when I go to the beach, I make sandcastles. One sandcastle about four hours of work and at the next high tide it will be washed away. Conclusion for us hobby guys it's just a hobby that's all.
But before we continue, first I would like to try something. It works! I never thought it was so easy to do. Let's uh, continue. In the meanwhile, I'm ready to start cutting, so let's see what happens. Faster. I will bring you closer and let's check the results of the first cut. I don't know if the camera picks it up. I will put my hand behind the thing here. But I think it looks promising. And when I feel it already starts cutting. So I'm gonna take another cut. Make sure that these uh, four little corners are in good shape and we'll give it a try. Us. While I was continuing testing my grinding thing here, I had to stop. Because I was grinding this one, this one is ready to go, we're gonna test in a moment. While I was grinding this one, I see that it makes a terrible dust. And the plan is of course to be able to grind carbide. And I heard somewhere that carbide dust is maybe not a good idea to breathe in. So I stopped grinding and first thing to do is uh, install some dust extractor with my vacuum cleaner or something. But this one should be ready to go. Let's give it a try. Nice. Conclusion. Grinding end mills is easy, but it's maybe a good idea to use dust extraction because breathing this dust is not a good idea. 